Aye, my denko. I think that's the one, you know. It's FYF of Sports, man. It's Lamont. We are back with another podcast episode. Today we had some just NBA rumors and news information to give you guys today. And it's about the New York Knicks. Um, the Knicks are facing free agency threats from the Sixers and the Boston Celtics. You know, as we all know, the Knicks have probably one of the most surprising seasons in NBA history making one of the biggest turnarounds that I've personally witnessed in NBA history. We projected the Knicks to be dead last in the Eastern Conference. They surprised us. They wound up being the four seed, although they did lose to the Atlanta Hawks in the first round of the NBA playoffs. The one thing that the Knicks showed us is that there was a major culture change. There was a major shift in competitive balance, Tom Thibodeau brought a new edge to this team that nobody thought he could and you have to salute this particular team but going into offseason some of the things that we saw from the Knicks is we saw that the Knicks desperately needed more superstar power to fight and last throughout the playoffs they, they really got out la- outplayed by a young Trey Young uh, emerging superstar in this league and that and that roster's full of studs when you're talking about Bogdanovich and some of the other young guys over there that ultimately, not only did they step up defensively, because we knew the Knicks would step up defensively, but they came through offensively, and that's what propelled the Hawks. So how can the Knicks dive into this free agency? What moves can they make? Well, it's all going to start with the players that they have on this roster, and they're going to have to make some decisions. If they let all of their free agents walk, they're going to have a lot of cap space to make some major moves, but are there enough players out there. Those are some of the things that we're going to be talking about today. Let's go ahead and get into today's topic on the New York Knicks and some of the free agency moves that they can make going into next season. The New York Knicks are hoping to improve their roster through the draft and free agency in the 2021 offseason, but it looks like they have to make sure they'll be able to keep the core first. According to Mark Berman of the New York Post, the Knicks are in danger of losing starting shooting guard, small forward Reggie Bullock in free agency after a solid season in which he started 64 games and averaged 10.9 points per game on 44% shooting from the field. The 31-year-old is expected to ask for a rather significant pay raise. It remains to be seen if the Knicks want to retain him since it's likely he'll command the 9 0.2 0.2 million full mid-level exception. However, they'll need to make a decision rather quickly since the Boston Celtics and the 76ers are said to be interested in Bullock's services. The Lakers are also reported to have some interest and could make a run to lure him back to LA. Bullock played for the purple and gold midway through the 2018-19 season after the team traded him uh from the Detroit Pistons. New York will surely have some tough decisions to make after experiencing the playoffs for the first time in eight years. They would want to keep contending in the postseason and for the potential championship. Nonetheless, with the way the team is currently constructed, they will need to make some key additions to elevate themselves further. Whether Reggie Bullock is part of the future is unknown, but the Knicks should be making their decision sooner rather than later. There are no questions. The Knicks will be aggressive in free agency, but how will they deal with some of their own players who are hitting the market and looking for new contracts? This all depends on Leon Rose and the front office view of some of their players this most recent season, as we've already spoken of uh, with Reggie Bullock. The players, again, that are set to walk outside of Reggie Bullock, referring to Taj Gibson, Nerlens Noel, Alfred Payton, Derek Rose as well. If the Knicks allow all five to leave, they will have over 50 million to work with, but it would be in their best interest to keep some of the more influential free agents that they have on this roster. Uh, When we look at some of the considerations here, these are retention considerations as we see some of the players that we have and salaries at stake. Um, Well, Taj Gibson, after Mitchell Robinson went down with a fractured foot uh, the second half of the season, the Knicks brought in Taj Gibson to fill that void. He signed a one-year $2.28 million deal. If the Knicks elect to retain him, he will account for $1.7 million, a slight increase in earning. Uh, Nerlens Noel. Nerlens Noel was an impact player throughout the regular season, but obvious injury hindered 
his quality during the playoffs. He finished with a career high of 2.2 blocks and posted 5.1 points and 6 rebounds. Again, again, another big man who lacks scoring efficiency, but represents one of the best shot blockers in the league. Obviously, we've already talked about Reggie Bullock, given his abilities as a three-point shooter. He's likely uh, a far cheaper solution than targeting someone like Duncan Robinson out of Miami. We have Derrick Rose, another intriguing player uh, to consider. Uh, this is primarily because he is one of the reasons the Knicks made a late season run and secured the number four seed in the Eastern Conference. He averaged 15 points, four assists, and shot 48% from the field with New York this past season. He also hit 41% of his shots from the three-point line, averaging about three threes a game. His three-point percentage during his 35 games with the Knicks was a career high, proving he has plenty of gas left in the tank. While while his defense is a bit spotty, he offers more as an offensive weapon. The team could extend him for one more year at $10 million, but he will likely be looking for a pay increase based on his production, which is deservedly so. Uh, we got to talk about Alfred Payton. Uh, Alfred Payton. Alfred Payton, you know, of course, the Knicks, they're going to probably allow Alfred Payton to hit free agency based on his disappearance in the postseason and lack of offensive production. Leon Rose will likely replace him via trade or a draft prospect this season. So there we have it right there. There we have it right there with the New York Knicks. I mean, this is just kind of a summary of some of the, the issues that they're going to be dealing with as they go into this offseason. Tom Thibodeau and Leon Rose in this front office, they're going to have to figure out what players were integral pieces that helped them elevate to be the four seed. As I mentioned, Derrick Rose, they could keep him for $10 million, but will Derrick Rose seek a bigger payday with another team? I'm I'm almost um, I'm almost believing that Derrick Rose is potentially gonna seek a heftier payday just based on his based on the production. Um we have other guys on this team um, that the Knicks will need to focus in on because they have a lot of players that other teams are really looking if they you know if you can pluck a Reggie Bullock if you can pluck an Alfred Payton if you can steal a Nerlens Noel and some of these other guys that we mentioned earlier from the Knicks that's really going to change how effective this defense actually was and the Knicks will have to seek uh a potential free agency moves or draft prospects to fill those voids and this is not to mention some of the issues that they already have with players under contract but the Knicks are in a great position They've done a great job over the last couple of years of not panicking, making bad signings that are going to really decimate their cap. They've left their cap wide open. Unfortunately, this year, this is just not just one of those years where just you have that big name free agent that's going to really change the game if you can sign them to your team. So I'm curious to see what the Knicks look to do this offseason, uh, but I'm also going to be watching teams like the Sixers, teams like the Celtics. We know both of these teams need to add shooting to their bench. I mean, the Celtics struggled all year with no depth off the bench. As far as viable veterans who you can trust in the postseason. I mean, in the regular season, if you're referring to the Celtics, you can kind of skate by with the Peyton Pritchards, the Carson Edwards, and some of those young guys. But when the playoffs hit, you may have to sit those guys and go to the veterans like Reggie Bullock, who you know can defend and score at a high level in those pressure pack situations. So I want you guys, let me know what you think about the New York Knicks. Philadelphia 76ers, the Celtics, and all of these teams in play that are looking, even the Lakers, as I mentioned before, that are looking to snatch some of the core pieces of this Knicks team. And I want your thoughts on the Knicks. Do you guys think the Knicks can duplicate what they did this year? Will we see a regression in New York? I'm, a, I'm almost having the mindset that this team could have one of the biggest regressions, especially if they lose all of these pieces. And then they have to look to maybe the Duncan Robinsons, a guy who we know has struggled defensively. Uh, maybe a Rashad Holmes. All, there's a lot of free agents out there. Uh, a DeMar DeRozan, his name has been kind of thrown around out there. These guys are good players, but will it take away from the culture that they built up this year? And will this team be the same? I mean, they still have to make a decision on R.J. Bear. His up and down, up and down type of play. Sometimes people call him the bus. Other times they call him a borderline all-star. Again, it's just shaky. And then Julius Randle improved his game mightily, but in the playoffs, we saw that he cannot do it by himself. His game is just not made for that. Um, so curious to see what the Knicks can do. Will the Knicks trade Randle? His his trade value is at an all-time high right now. All right, Do they believe in him as one of the future pieces of this team? 
Would it be wise for the Knicks to move him now, get Max back for him, potentially bring in another all-star, maybe other assets, something, right? So you can head in the right direction, mold this team for the future. But Leon Rose and that front office, it looks like they're headed the right way. The higher in the top, Thibodeau was the start. Bringing in some of these guys, the draft moves that they made. Manuel quickly, probably one of the uh, biggest steals of last year's draft. Um, I called it one of the most, uh, uh, you know, just under the table, one of the best uh, draft picks um, that I saw last year. Because Emmanuel quickly, again, SEC player of the year, four-year player. I mean, what more, you know, you, you're talking about a guard who's ready-made to step right into the NBA out of Kentucky and, and give you, you know, and, and give you production off the bench. So, Again, I'm curious to see what this team can do going into the offseason and the next season. But you guys, when we go live, this is just another topic that we can talk about. We got the Knicks. We got the Sixers. Uh, we got the Boston Celtics. I really want to talk about the Miami Heat. Jimmy Jimmy Butler. What's going on there? There's been friction in Miami. All right. Is he getting along with Pat Riley? Will he force his way out? We've been hearing the rumors. Jimmy Butler potentially wants to be in New York. Back with Tom Thibodeau. Can... Jimmy Butler forced that trade into the Knicks. And what will the Knicks have to give up to get him? All right. Maybe there's a package out there where the Knicks can make a trade. Get Jimmy Butler and Duncan Robinson over there and give up assets. All right. Again, there's so much at play right now. The Knicks, the Knicks have so much cap flexibility. They can make a number of things happen. We just kind of have to sit back and watch um, as the draft comes upon us next week. Hey, but it's FYF Sports, man. It's been another great podcast episode. We'll be back with more sports news later. We're really going to be taking our time to break down just some of the inner workings and some of the rumors out there because at the end of the day, some of these rumors have, you know, some legitimacy to them, so we have to discuss them. But it's FYF Sports, another great podcast episode. We'll be back with more sports news later. Uh, but until then, it's FYF Sports, and we out.